And the title of our message for tonight is Shameless. What did I say? Shameless. Now, turn to the person next to you and say, I'm shameless. Now, don't be afraid to say that. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to say I'm shameless. Uh, some of you scared to say I'm shameless. Well, I'm telling you tonight that I am shameless. And that's our title for tonight. Pray with me as we go into the Word of God. Pray with me. Pray with me. Father God, we are so thankful to you for being our God. Since we last met here on yesterday, we have gone through many situations, potential harm, danger, challenges, situations that could have led to us not being here tonight. But you sent your angels to protect us. You guided, you guarded, you were there with us. Even while we sleep, while we slept last night, angels were there protecting us and we thank you oh god for all that you have done and all that you mean to us you brought us back one more time in this your place designated for worship for adoration for praise you have brought us also to hear a word from you now god i do not want to get in the way of what you intend to do. And so I pray that even as we open the book to take a look, even as we open your word, that it will be your voice that is heard. Now I pray this prayer, oh God, tonight, that you will move in a very special way and that Jesus will be lifted. Jesus will be seen. Jesus will be heard. And when all is said and done, may only his name be glorified. We pray with thanksgiving. Let the people of God say, say amen again. Amen. Shameless. There are some of us, we feel ashamed about many things in our lives. In fact, there are people who are ashamed of personal flaws that they have. I have met, I have seen, and in all fairness to you and in all transparency, there were times that I felt that God did an injustice to me. Every time I watch a basketball game or a, a, a football game, I see these guys with all this muscle. And I go lift some weights and try. And I stand before the mirror. I say my mirror isn't working very well. There's some people who are ashamed of personal flaws. They cover it with clothes and all kinds of things because they do not like how they appear. There are some individuals who are ashamed of where they are from. I heard somebody, hmm. I remember when I was a boy, very young in what we call prep school, primary school. I remember my school, we had a school trip and uh, the trip was passing, the bus was gonna pass by where I came from and I remember that I went to school to get on the bus to go back past where I'm from 
because I didn't want the bus to pick me up where I'm from. Are, are you listening to me? So I got up early that morning, went to school, and when the bus was passing where I'm from, I acted like I did not know that place. Now when the bus was coming back, my sister was on the trip too, and when we got to the place where we had the school picnic, uh, my sister and I, we had a little conversation that we were not going to get off the bus where we're from, but we're going to get off the bus by Sister Johnson's house, which was at the side of the road, which was a big house. Oh, come on, somebody. I've already confessed those sins. Come on, somebody. And so when the bus came by Sister Johnson's house, we stopped the bus, and uh, uh, we, we were there waiting for the bus to drive off, but the driver wanted to ensure that we got in. The problem was, Sister Johnson had a dog. <laughs> Are you with me, somebody? And so we stood there and waved at them, telling them, we're fine, we're fine. Good, Sister Johnson came out and called us in, and we went on inside, ashamed of where I was from. Well, since that time... I have recognized there's no need to be ashamed of where I'm from because I'm thankful to God that God has been leading in my life. Not ashamed of where I'm from. God is good. It doesn't matter where you're from, where God is leading you is more important. Do I have a witness in here? And so I go back to where I'm from and I take videos and I post them and I say to people, this is where it started. Because where it started is not where it is now. I praise God. I've had the opportunity and I tell you that when I come here night after night, I will testify of the goodness of God in my life because I cannot recommend to you somebody and something that is not good to me. And when I stand here night after night, I can tell you that God has done great things for me. And that is why tonight, our text of focus is Romans chapter 1 coming from the Apostle Paul. Paul in Romans chapter 1 declaring as I'm doing here in St. Croix right here at this church and will be doing for the next few nights. I am declaring unto you that I'm anxious to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it has the power. It is the power of God unto salvation. I declare unto you that I've had the opportunity of traveling all over this world. And had it not been for the gospel, I would not have traveled across the world. Are you listening to me? I am so glad that I have the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's something that has transformed my life. That's what I want to recommend to somebody here tonight. The gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? The gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news of salvation. It's the good news that all of us present here, despite where we are from, despite what we have gone through, there is a Savior, Jesus Christ. 
who can transform your life and make you into a better person. You may have come in one way, but praise God, you can go out another way because of the goodness of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Christ carries within it the power to transform lives. And I can testify of that, that Jesus Christ has the power to change our lives. When mankind sinned in the Garden of Eden, the Bible tells us that mankind disobeyed God. God gave instructions for how Adam and Eve should live. The Bible tells us that Eve, uh, she listened to the voice of the uh, serpent, the devil. I'm going to be talking about that one of these nights. And I'm going to be telling you how it all began. She listened to the voice of the devil. Ate from that forbidden tree that God said do not eat from. And uh, she shared that with her husband. They both ate from that fruit. And the Bible said that sin entered into this world. And brothers and sisters because of sin. There was a separation between man and God. Because sin separates us from God. Isaiah chapter 59, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us in verse 2, but your iniquities have separated between you and God. Sin separates us from God. There's a gulf between. When sin entered the world, mankind could no longer relate to God as God wanted God in his holiness had to devise a plan for mankind. In fact, that plan was laid from the foundation of the world. For our God sees the end from the beginning. Are you listening to me? Now, quick note of reference. You and I, we can see the beginning from the end. But we cannot see the end from the beginning. Because when you look from the end to the beginning, that's history. Are you with me, somebody? Uh -huh. you, 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 you can stand right here and look back. But you can't stay here and see what's going to happen ahead of you. But we serve a God who is able to see ahead. And that's why I trust him, you know, because I serve a God who is able to go ahead in my life and see where I'm going to have a problem and solve my problem ahead of time. God devised a plan because sin created a gulf. On my way over, Brother Emmanuel was telling me that there are two bridges. One on the center line, center line road. And I kept seeing one, a sign that says the East Airport Road Bridge is closed. Hmm? Well, you all sound like you're not from St. Croix. Huh? The bridge is closed. Therefore, we have to drive around. Are you with me, somebody? Now, now I remember the picture was on the screen earlier. Um, I remember one night I was pastoring. I had five churches at the time. And I remember I was moving from one church to another. One, one evening, I spent the afternoon at one church. The name of the church, Guava Gap. And I was going to another church by the name of Everton Park. And I was driving, I was driving. They used to call me Speedy Gonzalez because I used to drive very fast. I wanted to get to my place fast and I was driving. And on my way there, uh, the rain had fallen and uh, as I came around a corner, I saw somebody standing in the road and they said, stop, stop, stop. And I said, what's going on? They said, there was, uh, because of the rain, the road is broken in two. Can't go across. 
And so I had to turn my car around. And while I was turning my car around, one of the young men from the community said to me, Pastor, you don't have to turn all the way around and drive the long distance around to get to the church. We can get some wood. Are you listening to me, somebody? And we can stretch it across. And you can drive your car across. Well, I said to him, where did you get your license? He said, Pastor, if you want me to drive the car across, I'll drive it across. I came out, I gave him the keys, he drove the car across. Because there was a bridge that was made across, so I didn't have to go the long way around. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ represents that bridge that is made over that separation that you and I have made because of sin. Jesus is the bridge over that separation. And I'm so glad tonight that I have a Savior who stands in the gap. Can I hear you say amen? amen? It's not very difficult to recognize that when sin came, you and I, we're separated from God. But Jesus Christ came to bridge the gap between God and mankind. I want to tell you another reason why Jesus came because God made a provision. God made a provision for mankind to be saved and he sent his son Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son on Sabbath. I'll be preaching on that text. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have have everlasting life now jesus christ came to reconcile he is the bridge over the separation he came to reconcile and that word simply means that he came to bring us back together 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19 says, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And that means that he was pulling us back together where sin made separation. Well, I see that you're not understanding it like I want you, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you, you realize I like to tell a lot of stories, so I'm going to tell you a story. I was not a rude kid, didn't give a lot of trouble, but there were several kids in my class at school that gave trouble. They would get into fights, and I remember vividly many times when we had a fight in class, our teacher would come in the class and as kids, I would see the teacher would hold one kid with the right hand and another kid with the left hand and, 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 and they're huffing and puffing. They don't want to talk. They just fought. They were still having that uh, temper boiling over. And, <laughs> and the teacher would say, I want for you to shake hands. And sometimes they don't want to shake hands. And what the teacher did was pull them together. The teacher would have them shake hands. The teacher stood there and reconciled them and said, you ought not to be fighting. Pull them together. Jesus Christ came to pull us together with God. God sent his son. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Not that God needed us, but that God loved us and God knew that we need him more. And so Jesus Christ came to reconcile humanity with divinity. 
But here's another reason why Jesus Christ came to this earth, why God sent his son. God sent his son to veil divinity with humanity. Now, why is that so? The Bible tells us that God is a consuming fire. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 24 in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29 tells us that God is a consuming fire. It means that the power of God can destroy us immediately. If one angel were to land here in this place with all of the powers of an angel unveiled, all of us would die. That's an angel. I'm not talking about God. It's an angel. If God were to, quickly each of us would be destroyed. But when sin entered the world, the Bible tells us that mankind who would communicate with God previously, they could no longer communicate with God. God needed a way to have mankind communicate with God without being destroyed. God is a consuming fire. And so what God had to do was to send his son to veil divinity with humanity. Well, let me put it like this. When I was a kid growing up, I remember I grew up in a place called Clark's Hill, West Rural, Rural, Rural Country, Jamaica. Rural means that it's in the bushes. When I was a kid, we never had electricity in our house. Are you listening to me? I know some of you can't relate to it, or some of you don't want to remember it. Hmm? Yeah, I know you, you, you have gone beyond that now. Forget the things that are of the past. Huh? So we never had electricity in our house, and I remember... When I was coming home from school and the Jamaica Public Service, those are the light and power people, I saw them in the community and they were digging holes and they were planting poles throughout the community. And I saw them when they were running the lines uh, on the poles and I, I, I watched them every day because when I went to school, those kids at school, they would be talking about what they watched on television and I couldn't talk about watching anything on television. And they would talk about what they got from the refrigerator. I couldn't talk about refrigerator. I, they would talk about toasting bread and all them things. I, I couldn't talk about that. All I could talk about was, was, was cooking on stone and, you know, you know. Are, are you with me, somebody? I, I just woke up some of your memory. Help me, Holy Ghost. And I remember seeing them. They planted these poles throughout the community. They ran the wires and I observed that as they ran the wires, they ran three at the bottom and then they ran three up top. And one day as I came home from school, I watched this man, he climbed up on the pole and he had a rope and he pulled the rope over and somebody else was pulling up a pan-like thing on the pole. And I asked one of the men standing and I said to him, tell me, what, what is that pan you're, you're, you're putting up there? He said, it's, it's, it's called a transformer. I said, what's that for? He said, you see those wires at the top? I said, yes. He said, those carry the megavolts, the big volts. See the ones at the bottom? They, they, they carry the lower volts. And he said, notice, it's the ones at the bottom that your house has the wire connected to. I said, yes, I see that. And he said, the reason for that is, we don't want to put all the power 
into your house. I said, no, 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 no. I, 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 you, we haven't had electricity all our lives, and now you're going to shortchange us? <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, we want the power from the top. Waiting all my life for electricity, and now you're going to give me the lower power. I want all the power. He said, no, no, no. If we run all the power, it's going to burn your TV up. It's going to burn your whatever up. And that's why we have to put that pan-like thing in between so that we run the wires from the top and run it through the transformer into the lower wires so that when it goes into your house, it will not burn it up. You still will receive good quality. The quantity may not be the same, but the quality will be good. Well, I'm here to let you know that God is a consuming fire. God is at the top. He's the top wires. And if we were to tap into God, we would be burnt up. But God said, I need to save you. So he puts Jesus in between. Jesus is my transformer. So that when I tap into Jesus, I can have the power of God, yet not destroyed. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Because the truth be told, all of us present here tonight, because of our sins, we should be destroyed. But praise be to God, we have a transformer. Amen. Can I hear you say amen? amen. And so Jesus came. To veil divinity with humanity. The Bible tells us, Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. For God commendeth his love towards us. That, that, that while we were yet sinners. That, don't, don't run too quickly. While we were yet sinners. Not after you became righteous. While you were yet sinners. Christ died for you. He's not waiting for you to make it right. Because he knows you can't make it right. So God commendeth his love towards us. That even before we would make that mistake. He made the provision in Jesus Christ. Can I hear you say amen? So guess what? You and I, we don't have to worry about coming to God and be destroyed. We can come boldly to the throne of grace because of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Because of Jesus Christ, we can come to God and not be destroyed. But here's another reason why Jesus Christ came to the earth. Jesus Christ came to be our example. Hmm? He came to be our example. You and I, brothers and sisters, we needed someone to show us how we can live above sin. So that where our first parents failed, somebody needed to show us that Satan will not always win. Are, are you with me, somebody? And so Jesus Christ came and Satan tried several times to trip Jesus up. He tried on the mountain. Matthew chapter 4 tells us he tried to tempt Jesus. And Jesus spoke to the tempter satan three times he tried and three times jesus said to him it is written and i want to declare unto you my brothers and sisters that you and i we can be victorious because jesus christ has shown us how 
He has shown us. And I'm so glad Jesus did not come as, a, as an adult. I'm glad he came and was born in a manger and he grew up just like any one of us. He grew up just like a child so that a child can say he is my example. He grew up as a teenager. The teenager can say Jesus is my example. Are you listening to me somebody? The adult can say Jesus is my example. And that is why let me tell you right now up front. Every parent in this place in the hearing of my voice. I don't like to hear when people say my child is not yet ready to be baptized. Because they don't know. Now, let me tell you. And I will tell you my experience one of these nights that I got baptized as a child. And I wasn't the one who didn't know. It was my parent who didn't know. I'll, I'll tell you the story. You got to keep on coming. I won't tell you when I'll tell it. But you got to come. But Jesus can relate to children. That's why when the disciples tried to turn them away, Jesus said, no, 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 calm down. I love children. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Jesus came to be our example. I remember I was driving on the road. And I remember I got a puncture. And I made a call to one of my friends who does mechanic work for a living. And I said to him, listen, come over. I'm not going to be calling AAA. I, uh, it's just my tire here. I need to change it. I need to go. I can't wait. And he said to me, he's on the phone. He said, listen, um, all you have to do is just look in the trunk beneath the, lift up this thing. You find the, the jack and the lug tool and all you do is put it on. He was on the phone. Are you with me, somebody? He was on the phone telling me what to do. I said to him, bro, I could have called anybody to tell me what to do. I want for you to come over here. Huh? And, and show me what to do. Well, when he came over, he said, this is what I was telling you on the phone. He went in the back of my car. He took the thing out. He jacked up my car. And he took the tire, the tire off. And he uh, did all that needed to be done. And when he was done, I said, thank you very much. I knew all of that. Listen to me. He ran, he ran after me with that lug tool, wanted to knock me out for getting him to come over. But brothers and sisters, he came to show me what to do. Well, Jesus came to show us that we can be victorious. Every one of us can be victorious. But guess what? The final thing I'm going to tell you tonight, because I need for you to come back tomorrow night. Final thing, not only did Jesus come here, brothers and sisters, to reconcile us to God. Not only did he come to veil divinity with humanity. Not only did he come to be our example. But Jesus came to help us to live victoriously. See, the truth is, you can show me how to do something, but if you help me to do it, oh, come on, somebody. If you help me along the way, it's better. Huh? Jesus could have said, let me tell you how you can live victoriously. And he could have shown us how to live victoriously. But Jesus said, I'm not just going to show you how. I'm going to be with you when you are trying to live victoriously. So that whenever you meet upon a challenge, I am there to hold your hand and help you along. 
so that when the devil comes your way, you don't have to fight the battle by yourself. You've got Jesus on your side. You've got the big brother on your side. You've got Dexton Lewis on your side. Who is Dexton Lewis? Dexton Lewis was my new best friend in prep school. I told you I didn't fight a lot. Well, it moved from not fighting to fight a lot. Come on, work with me, somebody. I remember we had a guy in my, in my prep school and he came and he was beating up all the boys. And I remember I was looking at who was left to be beaten and I was on the short list. But there was a fellow who came and he was big his name Dexton Lewis Dexton was bigger than all the boys in school including the bully who was beating everybody up Dexton would come to school early in the morning and I remember looking at my prospects of being beaten I decided to go to school early and make friends with Dexter. Went to school. And I remember the first couple of days I used my lunch money. And I bought stuff for Dexter. I stayed hungry. I had a plan. Dexter was becoming my new best friend. Everywhere Dexter went, I was right beside Dexter. Lunchtime, when Dexter walked, I would walk beside Dexter. School dismissed, Dexter walked, I was beside Dexter. Sooner or later, brothers and sisters, I realized that. Because I have Dexter by my side, I didn't have to feel afraid anymore. So now I wasn't walking around nervous. When Dexter was beside me, I would walk like I could take on the world. Saw my bully friend and I would look at him as if to say, come on, try something. Because I got Dexter by my side and bully bully would try a couple of times and every time bully tried Dexter would grab him shake him and push him aside and I would walk away as if I did that are you with me somebody Dexter was my best friend everywhere that I was, Dexter was. Brothers and sisters, I am here tonight recommending to you Jesus Christ. He's better than Dexter. If you hook up with him as your best friend, when the devil comes your way, you don't have to do anything. Jesus Christ came to be my example, to show me how to live victoriously. Jesus came to help me to live victoriously. Now you understand why I'm shameless. That's why I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because sin does not have to have victory over me because of Jesus Christ. Can I hear you say amen? Because of Jesus Christ tonight, I can live victoriously. Because of Jesus Christ, somebody here tonight, I don't know who you are, but Jesus sent you here today to hear this word, to let you know that he's available to bridge the gap. You may have felt that you are far removed from God. Jesus is saying to you tonight, no, I'm here for you. I will pull you close to him. 
Jesus is saying to you, God's power will not destroy you because you have access through me. Jesus is saying to you, I have already won the battle. You can win it too. I've shown you the way. You can follow my example. And Jesus says when you start that journey, you won't be doing it by yourself. He will be with you. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank What a joy it has been to share with you in this Journey to Joy series. We would like to hear from you. Would you like us to pray for you? Oh, there's a number that comes on your screen. You can call that number right now, and it will be our joy just to pray with you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Continue as we journey together on our journey to joy.